In this video, we're going to talk about the law of sine. I'm not going to give you any proofs here for these. We're just going to show you how to use it. So the first step for this is what is the law of sine? Well, the law of sine is, and you see it different ways, but it basically it's this. Let's label this thing. Let's call it A, B, and C. We use capital letters for the angles, lowercase letters for the sides opposite those angles. So that's little a, this is little b, and this is little c. Typically c is always the biggest angle inside, but uh, it really doesn't matter with law of sine. So law of sine basically states this. If you have sine of a over a, that's the same as sine of b over b. Okay? Always do two ratios at a time. So that's one possibility. You have three other possibilities, but essentially it's this. It's also equal to sine C over C. But don't ever put three together like that. that that's not going to help you out much. And uh, the more practice, the better you'll, you'll get with that. So the, to start with, um, we're given sine of one, we've got, we're given 112 degrees and the side opposite of that, which is 17. It could be inches, could be feet, who knows. And let's find, since we're given 28, let's go ahead and find this little a. And you just plug it straight into that formula. So let me pull it back up here. So we have sine of a. Well, a is 28 degrees, sine 28 degrees, over little a equals sine of b, which we know b is 112 degrees, over little b. Oh, excuse me. And we're given those values. We have we don't have a, but we do have little b, which we know is 17 inches, feet, whatever. Then to solve that, you just get your calculator out and uh, find sine of 28 and find sine of 112. With with uh, Google, if you use Google as your calculator, like I have here, make sure that you it's always defaults to radians. So make sure you know what angle you're dealing with, either degrees or radians. Now it's in degrees, there it's in radians. We want it in degrees because that's the angles they gave us. So we'll just type in sine of 112, hit equals, so that's 0.9272. So 0.9272. So we basically have this. So 0.9272 over 17 equals sine of 28. You could find that as well. Uh, but what's nice about this is you could just type it all into your calculator at once. We're going to cross multiply. So you're taking A times sine of 112. So that's the 0 0.9272 equals... Uh, times a, excuse me, equals 17 times sine of 28. So we can go ahead and uh, we wouldn't need this 9272 here. We could go ahead and just leave it a times sine of 112. And what's kind of nice about this is then to solve for a, you just divide by sine of 112. I'm just showing you on the calculator. That's what you can do. And so this is also sine of 112. We're dividing both sides. They cancel. And so we know A equals 17 times sine 28 divided by sine of 112. You can just plug all that in. So sine 28, sine of 112. So let's just uh, throw all that together. So let's see, 17 times, and I've, let's see, where's the time, there it is, times sine of 28, and you always close your parentheses, divided by sine of 112. And what's nice is if I screwed it up, um, we should be able to see that on the triangle. Whoops. And it looks like it's 8.6, uh, 8.61. So we go back. 17 times sine of 28, 8.61. That that seems reasonable. Woo. Not 
sure what just happened there. So 8.61. Now if you want C, you just do the same thing. One thing we're missing though is we need this angle C right here. So we'll go ahead and uh, find that because we know triangles equal 180. So you take 180 minus 112 minus 28. So 180 minus 112 minus 28. And so 40 degrees is that other angle. And now you can do the same thing. So we have sine of 112 given to us, that angle, sine of B over B. So sine of B, sine of 112 over 17 is the same as sine of 40 over C. And then you cross multiply, just like we did on the last one. So C times sine of 112 is the same as 17 times sine of 40. Then you would divide by sine of 12, 112. And so C is equal to 17 sine of 40 divided by sine of 112. So you can go back, you can plug all that in. So 17 times, and I've already forgotten what it was, 17 times sine of 140, or sine of 40, 17 sine of 40, and close your parenthesis, divided by sine of 112, and 11.8. So this is about 11.8 inches, feet, whatever. And that kind of makes sense. That fits. If you would have ended up with a bit side bigger than 17, we know we have problems. <clears throat> or a side smaller than, than, ang than side A, we'd have problems. But those all fit. Looks like we're doing pretty good there. Always make sure you check to see if it makes sense. Then here's another situation. So See if you can figure this out. Now, there's a, this is slightly different because we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and uh, have to use inverse sine here. But um, if you're familiar with Sokotoa, you should be okay with inverse sine. So we're gonna call gonna call this A, B, and C like that. Uh, this one would be little b then. Uh, little c would be right here, and little a would go right here. And so we're ready to go ahead and use the law of sine. So sine of A over A equals sine of B over B equals sine of C over C. So we're given 78 and we're given 7 here. So we're going to be kind of forced into finding A first. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we'll just go ahead and do that. So it would be sine, let me get that up there, so it's b over b. So we're using this part and this part. So sine a, which we don't know, so sine a over little a, which is 7, equals sine b, which we do know, sine b is 78, over little b, which is 13. And so we can go ahead and, and cross this, cross multiply this in the same fashion. So 13 times sine of A equals 7 times sine of 78. Then you divide by 13, divide by 13. And we know sine of A equals 7 sine 78 divided by 13. So 7 sine 78 divided by 13. So 7 times sine of, I already forgot the angle, 78 divided by 13, which is 0.52669. Now, by plugging it all in together, we eliminate some of the uh, uh, rounding errors. 
So the next thing we're going to do is find the inverse of that so that we can get to the angle. So I'm going to click on inverse, which changes that to the inverse sine, and which is also called an arc sine. And I'm going to hit answer, which is in the bottom left there. I kind of have it off the screen, which is at 0.52669. Close my parentheses. So the arc sine of 0.52669 is 31.78 degrees. So we know this is 31.8 degrees for that angle, which and in actuality that makes somewhat sense because I did draw this triangle proportionally. So then the next thing we could find is angle C. So for angle C, again, you would add up all the angles to be 180. So 180 minus 78 minus 31.8 is 70.2 degrees. And you can do the same thing. So now sine of 70.2 over C, because we don't know it, equals sine of 78 over 13. And again, it's a matter of cross multiplying and solving. So that'd be uh, C times sine of 78 equals 13 times sine of 70.2. And then you just divide by sine of 78. So there's what C would be. You just get your calculator out, take 13 times sine of 72, 70.2, divided by sine of 78. So let's get that back in there. 13 sine of 70.2. So 13 times sine of 70.2. Close the parenthesis. Divided by sine of 78 equals, and it looks like 12.5. So 12.5 is C, and you can throw that one in there. And it and that makes some sense. 70 degrees is less than 78. 78 gave you a 13 degree angle. This should be less than that, but it should be quite a bit bigger than 7 since uh, 7 is only 32 degrees, so it's more than double 7. Uh, the angle is more than double 32 degrees anyway. So 12.5 makes sense. Wouldn't necessarily be double the side length. Didn't mean to say that. But there you have it. So those are the missing angles and sides. So right there. Hope this helps. That's generally how you use Law of Sign, and see you next time.